Hello and welcome to day 16 of Adventures in Tarot Casting, um, a series where I have been show and tell and basically describing some of the casting boards that we create and why I decided to draw the particular design or pattern and give you a quick little demonstration with a reading. I want to preface this video with the fact that you might hear my dog clicking around in the background. Um, we are experiencing some thunderstorms and he does not really do well with them. So don't mind the basset. <laughs> anyway, so this particular board, I call it the shadow casting tarot board um, because it's it basically invites you to t come and take a look at those issues and or the darker things that might be bothering you, right? So the idea was a cliff here with this cave that is shaped like a skull, um, which is basically when you come to the edge of this cliff, you have to cross this bridge in order to come and confront your shadow, right? Um, I have placements here, here, and here. Like you can see the little outlines and these placements basically invite you what brought you to the ledge, what's gonna help you cross the bridge, and what you will find in your shadow. Um, and then there's tile placements here, here, and here, and here, here, and here. And these I usually use for Lenormand, and they basically are ways to give you action steps of like, this is what brought us, you know, this is what brought us here, but this is why. And this is how we overcome it and are able to kind of rise above and, and cross back over. So the imagery, um, obviously a skull was a very, it was like an obvious point for me to create like a shadow cave because, well, you can draw it with the mouth open and what's inside is also kind of in our heads, right? It's this, this board is like a proverbial, our shadow is what is inside us, right? It's not necessarily somebody who's coming after you. I mean, if that is, then then obviously you need to call authorities, not watch a tarot reading. Um, but then there's the snake that invites you to see it and transform and shed, right? Like when I see snake, it's just about change and it's about they shed their skins when they outgrow their body size, you know? So this is kind of like what you'll find in the shadow allows you to transform. The crows go between the worlds, so they they help you see and remember what may not be there. So there's a lot of symbolism. And then in the background, I knew I wanted to do all these kind of ghosts coming up. And, you know, there's a lot of um, this writing. So this board was actually created all in Procreate. And it was done in a way that mimics Copic markers. So had I done this actually on Bristol and with markers, it would have been Copic's but I can get some effects in Procreate that I can't get in using markers. So anyway, let's get to the reading, shall we? So I'm using Out of Hand Tarot. I'm just gonna show you how to, what brought us to this point, right? Hello, baby, it's okay. Could be what Barney needs to confront in his shadow as to why he's so afraid of thunders. <laughs> okay, I'm giving it a good shuffle because I used the deck yesterday for a live and I had it all reordered. So, okay, so here's what brought us to this point. And we've got the fool. And then what's in the cave. So with this, I like to do what's in the cave before I do the bridge, you know, cause this is kind of like, this is what's gonna help you get over into here. We have the eight of cups and then we have the five of cups. And so I feel like what brought us to this, what brought us is this desire to wanna begin again, right? Like the fool is talking about how naive we can be at times and also just looking at the world perhaps through rose-colored glasses and just daring to go out on this adventure maybe we didn't think everything through and now we're really some stuff's coming up right so like over here we see this eight of cups and we're going oh man 
I don't want to know the things I need to walk away from. I don't want to know all this, but I need to confront it in order to have this peaceful journey, right? And the bridge, what brings us here is this grief. It's looking at the things that we've lost that are perhaps broken, that we've been trying to fix for so long, when we really just need to look at the fact that there's still stuff that's worth salvaging and it's not broken. You know, I look at this at five of cups as kind of like, well, there's clearly this bridge over troubled water, right? So we wouldn't be here if we weren't experiencing some of this, right? So. Like I said, what's in our shadow is our Eight of Cups, and the Eight of Cups is also that Saturn and Pisces energy. So it's the desire to manifest something new, to dream bigger than we are, but we keep seeing our own limitations. So getting to this cave, we have to confront some grief, right? And so now I'm going to bring in some Lenormand. And this just, these help us expand upon the story. got whip fox it's really coming down out there it's a perfect board for a stormy morning rain and then I'm also going to do the overlaying tiles we've got birds mountain and anchor okay so what is rising up from the depths here is this whip fox and ring energy right like this is what's coming up from this side of our cliff like what we're seeing now that we're in the cave we're seeing that it's this like perhaps there's been some commitments that we have gotten into that have been undesirable they've been unsavory we've been going back and forth with them and we're just seeing that there was what we thought was out of the box thinking was perhaps thinking that was like just not in the best interest of all but just in the best interest of ourselves so that's where we have to kind of look at it and pick up the pieces and just clean up and move on to this and there's a lot of like I feel like this card is talking about seeing what's broken, seeing if it's worth salvageable. And then this one is like, stack them, let's get them, let's get these emotions in place so that we can move away. And when we bring it this way, and we bring it upwards to confronting the shadow, sitting in here, and you can sit in this space for as long as you need to and keep going back and be like, well, how can I look at this with full energy? How can I look at this with fresh eyes? And you could see, well, it's okay to begin again. We can start over at any time, right? But before we leave, we should clean up the mess. And then we've got going through it, like now that we're able to transform, we see, okay, there's gonna be some some chatter, Some we're still gonna hear things that maybe make us feel a little bit immovable, stop us in our tracks, like this, the gossip that needs to just be halted by this mountain energy, right? Mountain is like this huge obstacle and it's still going to be weighing down. It's going to be part of who we are, but we don't have to allow it to, to control us, right? So like the mountain is something that is talking about, it's a slow, it's slow to climb. The anxiety's brought you to the mountain, but after you get to it, once you scale those heights, you're going to be in this space of the anchor, which is, you know, that solid, just really rooted in who you are at that point you know so that's how we get through it and there's no easy way when we confront our shadows it's not like oh, okay i saw it i'm here i'm done got the t-shirt you have to do some work in order to get there um and then i also have this here so i'm gonna pull in some animal energy and some portal tiles and this is just going to be something to help us guide us through while we climb our proverbial mountain, right? And there are some spaces that you can you can use. You don't have to use them all, but if you want to, it's here. So who's helping us? And the skunk shows up to tell us as long as we maintain our boundaries, we do not need to explain ourselves to anybody, especially when doing this type of work. So knowing that our reputation may precede us, but as long as we stand in our power and, and know who we are and 
put up some strong boundaries. We will be able to scale those mountains. We will be able to confront this, the, the broken pieces and put them back together. And, you know, I can't help but think about, I'm going to forget the art. Um, I think it's the Japanese art when they, they glue something back together and they put the gold in it. So just know when you go back together, you're going to be shinier than you were before, right? So that's, that's in a nutshell, this board. I mean, you can, these cards were very direct. If you had cards that were a little less, you know, direct, then you could you could spend a lot more time on a reading like this. But I feel like this is basically like, okay. What brought us to the bridge? The grief, and just being able to see it with new eyes, and was going to get us past the mountain is really anchoring ourselves and our boundaries. So, thank you for being here, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.